Today, the White House announced that President Joe Biden will travel to Poland later this month to reaffirm the United States' support for Ukraine. The announcement caps off a truly excellent week for President Biden, a week focused on governing and trying to make people's lives better. After a successful State of the Union address on Tuesday, the pre president and the vice president hit the road. In Wisconsin on Wednesday, President Biden talked about jobs and the economy. We've created 12 million new jobs, a half a million jobs just last month. We've created more jobs in two years, more jobs in two years than any president's created in a single four-year term. Inflation has fallen six months straight. Inflation is coming down. Take-home pay and workers is going up slightly. Manufacturing is rebounding at the fastest rate in almost 40 years. The economy is growing at a solid clip. Folks, I hate to disappoint them, but the Biden economic plan is working. It's working. In Minnesota yesterday, Vice President Harris talked about jobs and the climate crisis. So, Minnesota, this is a transformative moment. The climate crisis has presented an historic challenge to our nation and to the world. It also presents a historic opportunity to create good jobs, to drive innovation, to generate prosperity in all communities. And of course, the president talked about defending entitlements from Republican senators who won't stop talking about it. I know that a lot of Republicans, their dream is to cut Social Security and Medicare. Well, let me say this. If that's your dream, I'm your nightmare. <laughs> okay. So the first time around in 2010, I just laid out the reality of Social Security. It's a legal Ponzi scheme. It is. It's truly a legal Ponzi scheme. I pointed out that reality, and of course, I get blasted. You recently put out an 11-point plan to rescue America. That would raise taxes on half of Americans and potentially sunset programs like Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Why would you propose something like that in an election year? Sure. Well, John, that's, of course, the Democrat talking point. It's a no, 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 it's plan. in the plan. <laughs> it's in well, the plan. It, it... Pretty normal stuff from Team Biden. Jobs, Social Security, protecting democracy at home and abroad. But over on the Republican side, it's getting weird. Real weird. Kevin McCarthy and Jim Jordan finally got to show America what they would do if they were in power. And their first big investigative hearing was on trying to prove online conservative conspiracy theories that Twitter violated the First Amendment about Hunter Biden's laptop, and that's why Donald Trump lost the election. <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> also, they didn't even prove their point. To Mr. Raskin's point that you guys aren't bound by the First Amendment because you're a private company? Okay, maybe so. <laughs> and speaking of Republican embarrassments, con man freshman Congressman George Santos got called a sick puppy, that's a quote, by Republican Senator Mitt Romney on national television. And then George Santos was in the news for charges he faced involving puppies. And then a resolution to expel him was introduced. And somehow, that wasn't even the end of this week's Santos news cycle. During an appearance on a right-wing media outlet, Santos was asked about his interaction with Romney, prompting him to tell this story about Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema. Kirsten Sinema, as she was walking by the senator from Arizona, she said something to the effects of hang in there, buddy, or something like that. I said, thank you, thank you, uh, Madam Senator. She was very polite, very kind-hearted, as, as I've learned to, to, to see her. Uh, she's a good person, unlike Mr. Romney. <laughs> You're never going to guess what Sinema's office said about that interaction. It never happened. Senator Sinema's spokesperson said that's, quote, a lie and that Cinema and Santos never spoke on Tuesday night. Okay, well, given that we're talking about George Santos, maybe you did guess that. Here's fellow Republican Nancy Mace attempting to make fun of George Santos, while also making fun of fellow Republican Lauren Boebert, and also making fun of Donald Trump 
and the many, many Republican members who followed him. Listen to this. Come on, George, you've given Republicans a bad name, and that's Lauren Boebert's job. <laughs> Just kidding, Lauren, don't shoot. I mean, really, like, who lies about being a, about playing college volleyball? Like, who does that? <laughs> if you're gonna lie, at least make it about something big. Like, you actually won the 2020 presidential election. So funny, it ended with an attack on the Capitol. I wonder if Mike Pence laughed when he got his subpoena from the special counsel yesterday. If you need just one more example of the alternate reality that Republicans are living in, you'd be hard-pressed to find one better than the Republican response to President Biden's State of the Union address. That response was delivered by Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders, though you may remember her from her previous job of lying for Donald Trump as his press secretary. The dividing line in America is no longer between right or left. The choice is between normal or crazy. Most Americans simply want to live their lives in freedom and peace. But we are under attack in a left-wing culture war we didn't start and never wanted to fight. Every day we are told we must partake in their rituals, salute their flags, and worship their false idols. All while big government colludes with big tech to strip away the most American thing there is, your freedom of speech. Say what now? Does that look or sound anything like the America you live in? And which party in Washington is obsessed with the crazy non-issues she conjured up? I'll give you a hint. It's the one she's in. Though in all fairness, I will say I agreed with Huckabee Sanders on her point about the choice between normal and crazy. The problem is, for the modern-day Republican Party, crazy is the new normal.